Dogs are a man's best friend, but because we're so busy walking them, picking up their poop and scratching their cute little ears and kissing their cute little heads, we don't spend enough time learning about them. And I'll tell you this for free, there's a lot to learn about these fluffy little bundles of joy. These are 20 facts about dogs that will surprise you. Number 20. Dogs visiting the bathroom. Our dogs like to follow us everywhere, but here's what it means if your dog follows you to the bathroom, the very last place you'd want them to join you. They love us so much that they don't want to be away from us. Some of it comes down to animal instinct. You're their pack and they want to protect you as part of their pact. If they can't see you, it's not uncommon for them to feel vulnerable. Some dogs are also clever and know they get affection or treats when they're with you. They form a positive association with your presence, and if they're not with you, there is a 0% chance of pets and treats. Then there's just downright curiosity. Human? Where are we going? What are we doing? Don't leave me behind! Everything to them is magical, and they might miss out on something amazing if they don't follow you to the bathroom. And if going into the bathroom forms part of a routine for something exciting, like brushing your teeth before taking them on a walk, you can almost guarantee they'll be wagging their little tails off while they wait for you to finish up. Number 19. Stray Dogs Master the Subway we probably don't give dogs enough credit for how smart they are. Some dogs know how to sit and stay, but the stray dogs in Moscow, Russia, have mastered using the subway system. It's believed that they've been using the complex subway system for at least two decades. Experts believe they started hopping around the subway to escape the cold in winter. I mean, it makes sense. Subways are generally quite warm and dry, and it's a nice place for them to thaw out and take a well-deserved nap. But with time, they have started to sniff out other benefits of using the subway. Many dogs have begun to realize that if they take specific trains at specific times, they can end up in places where scraps and tidbits are plentiful. It's believed that they can identify the best routes based on smells, sounds, signs, shapes, and symbols. Some dogs will wait patiently for the doors to open before hopping aboard, while others will leap on at the last minute to reduce the chances of being removed. Some have even learned to sit on the roof and cling to the sides. 10 out of 10, smart boys and girls. Number 18, they can live for 30 years. In an ideal world, dogs would live forever. As most dog owners know, saying goodbye to your faithful companion is one of the hardest things you'll ever do in life, and even harder is knowing that the clock counts down awfully quickly, with most dogs living an average of 10 to 13 years. But that's not to say your dog won't live longer, they can actually live up to nearly 30 years. The problem is that we don't know which ones will. The oldest dog ever recorded was Bluey, an Australian cattle dog that lived until he was 29 years, 5 months. Another dog called Chilla reportedly lived until they were 32, but their age couldn't be verified. Chilla was an Australian cattle dog crossed with a Labrador. Could the secret to a long lifespan be in the Australian cattle dog? A 100 dog study put the average lifespan of this breed at 13.41 years, so perhaps not. There are also other old dogs that weren't Australian cattle dogs, like a Beagle, Terrier, and Dachshund mix named Max, who lived for 29 years and 9 months, and a Labrador cross from the UK named Bella, who lived up to the ripe old age of 29. Many factors can play a part in how long our furry friends are with us, such as genetics, the level of care they receive, and their diet and weight. Scientists need to hurry up and find the elixir for life because this isn't fair. Number 17. Dogs help us live longer. As if dogs didn't already do so much for us, did you know that they can also make us live longer? They are too pure for this world. And we're not just talking out of our tails here. Actual scientific studies, which the American Heart Association was involved with, found that you might live a longer and happier life if you owned dogs. Overall, dog owners tend to recover better from significant health events like stroke and heart attack, especially if they live by themselves. And it all comes down 
to how happy they make us and how active they force us to be. When we interact with dogs, it's pretty hard not to be happy. Our bodies produce more happy hormones like serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin. We then feel better and keep our stress hormone, cortisol, to a minimum. Some people also have lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol, and fewer depressive episodes. Then there's the fitness factor. Dog owners typically get more exercise than people who don't own dogs. We walk them in our neighborhoods, take them to beaches and rivers, and visit local dog parks. Here, we also get our social fix, potentially reducing social anxiety and loneliness. Speaking of socials, have you liked this video and subscribed to our channel? Do it now, or your dog might start loving so Someone else more than you. Number 16. Smaller dogs live longer. We're not saying there aren't outliers and that some big dogs live longer than little dogs, but as a general rule, little dogs do tend to live longer, and heartbreakingly, it's most likely our fault. A study published in the American Naturalist found that our selective breeding of dogs to make them larger puts them at a higher risk of cancer. We breed them to be larger in such a small space of time that they might have an evolutionary lag. This means that they haven't been able to develop natural defenses against cancer fast enough. In studies, chihuahuas could live for up to around 17 years, while breeds like Great Danes only lived 8 to 10 years. They don't necessarily age quicker, but the more the body weight increases, the higher the cancer rates do too. It's absolutely devastating. We've done this. According to study co-author Jack Da Silva, an evolutionary geneticist, most of the approximately 400 dog breeds we have today have been developed in the last 200 years. They simply haven't had a chance to create and fine-tune their cancer defense mechanisms to match their size. The good news is that it doesn't mean that they never will. With time, selective breeding, and medical advancements, there may come a time when big dogs are afforded the same lifespan as small dogs. Number 15. Dogs feel jealousy. You've probably already witnessed this for yourself, but dogs feel jealousy. Interestingly, scientists don't always think it was possible. They didn't know dogs were capable of complex secondary emotions like envy, jealousy, and shame, even though many dog owners have witnessed it firsthand. Slowly, science is catching up with what dog owners have been saying all along. Yes, they do get jealous. Scientists started observing it in mothers with their puppies. As soon as their puppies became somewhat independent, their mothers would show signs that they didn't like the attention being diverted away from them to their offspring. It's not uncommon for some new mothers to start ignoring their puppies and exclude them from the nest. University of Vienna researchers also set up an experiment that, in my opinion, made them absolute monsters to these sweet angels. They had two dogs perform the same trick, but only one got a reward. When the unrewarded dog realized it wasn't getting any recognition, it stopped performing the task and showed annoyance and stress. And then there's what we notice ourselves. If we pat one dog, another comes and tries to force itself in front of the other dog to get the pat. If we play with one dog, the other one wants your full attention. They're a bit like kids, really. Number 14. Storms can hurt dogs. Not all dogs react to stormy weather. Some can sleep through it without any issues and becomes fearful during a storm. Have you ever wondered why? Well, it could have something to do with the fact that some experts believe stormy weather can be painful. The sound frequencies during some storm events can hurt their ears. There is also static electricity that can accumulate in their fur, which can be uncomfortable. Those points aside, the noise and not knowing what's causing it can also cause them to act out of character. Some dogs have extreme noise phobias and experience severe symptoms like panting, hiding, drooling, whining, and pacing. Some dogs even become destructive and destroy things in your house. It's also not uncommon for dogs to be so downright terrified of storms and even fireworks that they hurt themselves to try to escape the noises. They jump fences and go through windows and doors just to experience some kind of relief from what they're feeling. If your dog has an extreme noise phobia, there are some things you can do to help them. One family's dog was so destructive and terrified that they used to schedule time off work for when storms were due to arrive. With help from their vet, they devised a management plan that made it much easier for their dog to weather the storms. Number 13. Dogs can smell your feelings. 
Most dog owners will tell you that they don't need a scientist to tell them their dogs are in tune with their feelings. Anytime you've been feeling sad, you can probably recall that your dog came by and sat by you, nuzzled you, or just generally made you feel better. Well, scientists have actually now confirmed that dogs can smell how you're feeling and adjust their behaviors accordingly. Researchers from the University of Naples discovered that while dogs can use visual and auditory clues to learn what you're feeling, they can use their incredible sense of smell. Their sense of smell is up to 100,000 times better than ours and can identify scents at least 1,000 times better better than we can. In a university study, they wanted to test how dogs responded to the smell of sweat and tears. The sweat samples were collected from people and were presented to dogs, with researchers monitoring their behaviors and heart rates. Shockingly, their behaviors and responses started becoming consistent with the emotions of the humans. The researchers were able to deduce that dogs also started feeling fearful and would seek out reassurance from their owners. Number 12. Dogs don't like hugs. We hug people, and they seem to like it, so I guess we've just assumed that dogs like hugs too. Fun fact, they don't. Well, most dogs don't. You can typically tell when a dog likes or doesn't like a hug by their body language and reactions. Some dogs love being touched, no matter how you do it, so they will lean into the hug. When you stop, they might put their paw on yours, as if to say, more of that please. But some dogs will keep their bodies rigid, and might even try to move away from you. Some dogs will also have tense experiences expressions on their faces while keeping their mouths closed and their ears back. If your dog hates hugs, does that mean they don't love you? Not at all. Hugs just mean something different to them than it does to us. We use hugs as a way to show our love and affection, whereas hugs in the dog world typically mean dominance and control. You might notice when your dog is playing with others and one is a bit more dominant than the other, one will stand over the other dog and use their legs to dominate them. When we wrap our arms around our dogs, they can see it as a sign of control and dominance, almost like we're trying to show them who's boss, even when we just want to show them that we love them. Number 11. They aren't totally colorblind. A long time ago, a supposed expert said that dogs could only see in black and white. That theory stuck, and we just automatically assumed that our dogs couldn't see any color at all. That's not entirely accurate. Dogs can see color. They just don't see it like we do. Humans have three color receptors, whereas dogs have two, known as cones. With three color receptors, we can see a broad range of colors, whereas dogs can only see a limited color range. They can only see a combination of blue and yellow yellow. So when we see a bright red ball, dogs see a yellowy brown ball, place a yellow ball and a red ball side by side, and they wouldn't be able to tell them apart. And lush grass they're playing on? It looks dead and dehydrated to them. The way dogs see is also a bit different from us, as dogs are far more nearsighted. We might see an object at the same distance as a dog, and it's crisp to us and blurry to dogs. Number 10. Whiskers are radar sensors. You probably haven't given your dogs' whiskers much thought. They've always been there, and were there right from when they were born. But after learning about everything whiskers can do, you might pay closer attention to them from now on. Whiskers develop from hair follicles just like the rest of your dog's fur, but they are much coarser and have much deeper roots. They are mostly present around their eyes, chin, and upper lip, but exact placement can vary from breed to breed. Unlike the rest of your dog's fur, whiskers are also super sensitive because the follicles they come from have nerves and blood vessels. Experts believe that whiskers are just as sensitive as our fingertips. But why do they need them to be? Well, dogs use their whiskers for everything in their daily life. They help them navigate their environments and provide additional sensory input. They can detect air changes, movement, and objects, and help them learn details about things nearby, like their shape, size, and speed. Essentially, whiskers are radar sensors that help them truly see the world around them. Whiskers can even protect dogs. If the tiniest particles fall on them, they can shake them off to prevent dust or debris from entering their eyes. They can use their whiskers to know whether a gap is large enough for them to go through. Number 9. They're as smart as toddlers. 
You probably already know your dog is intelligent. They seem to know when it's almost dinner time or when you're getting ready to take them for a walk. So it's perhaps not surprising to learn that researchers believe most dogs are as bright as the average two-year-old child, with some a little more intelligent than most. Researchers conducted canine IQ tests with math, language, socializing, and emotions. They found that the average dog knew 165 words, signals, and gestures, putting them on par with the average two-year-old child. However, some dogs in the top 20% of intelligence could learn up to 250 words. The smartest dogs were Border Collies, Poodles, and German Shepherds, who were all closer in brilliance to a two-and-a-half-year-old. But when it came to math, dogs were surprisingly clever. While their language skills were closer to a toddler, they were actually at a three to four year old level with math. They could ace arithmetic tests when treats were used and had a basic enough understanding to count to four or five. Dogs also show spatial problem solving skills and basic emotions. They can locate items of value like toys and treats and work out how to find the fastest way to get to their favorite share. Number eight, dogs are left or right pawed. We are left and right-handed, so I guess it makes sense that dogs can be left or right pawed. However, while most humans are right-handed, dogs can pretty much be one or the other. Some can also be ambilateral, which is the same as ambidextrous in humans. They are comfortable using one paw the same as the other. But how do you even find out whether your dog is left or right pawed? After all, it's not like they throw balls, use cutlery, or write. Researchers use a number of activities, with the most popular being the Kong test. The Kong test involves the use of a dog Kong, which is a hollow rubber toy. They stuff it with food, and the dogs must hold the Kong still while they get the food out of it. Researchers will then compare the number of times they use either paw to hold the toy. Often, there's no discernible difference, meaning quite a large number of dogs are, are ambilateral. They might also use the first stepping test. This is when researchers measure which paw dogs use to take their first step from a standing position. You don't need a scientist to determine whether your dog is left or right pawed. Just do these tests at home. Number 7. Dogs don't feel guilt. We've all seen those funny videos of dogs looking downright guilty after their beds miraculously exploded or food went mysteriously missing from their owners' plates. Definitely looks like guilt. But is it actually guilt? Probably not. Most vets seem to think that it's just anthropomorphism when we attribute our human characteristics to our dogs or other animals. It looks like guilt to us, but it's actually not. A 2009 study found that the guilt expression of dogs relates more to the circumstance of what they did rather than them feeling bad about it. For example, a dog might show what we perceive as guilty body language when we tell them off. If you were to use the same language or tone of voice when they haven't done anything wrong, you might find that they still act as though they're guilty. And even if you don't scold them every time they've done something wrong, they might act guilty when they associate past similar instances with this one. They expect to be scolded, so they preemptively show the same signs. Typically, those signs are a tucked tail, licking, flattened ears, avoiding eye contact, and cowering or hunching. Experts believe that these are stress and fear signs rather than signs of guilt. Number 6. Dogs Dream we're probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but just like us, dogs dream. We already knew what we were seeing when our dogs went to sleep, but scientists wanted to make sure. So, in 2001, MIT researchers trained rats to run in a maze and measured their brain activity. Later, they measured their brain activity during REM sleep and found that the brain activity was the same as when they were running. This made researchers conclude that rats were dreaming about the maze they had run that day. We will never know for sure that animals dream as we do, but the firing patterns in cells are a pretty good sign that they do at least dream. According to the Sleep Foundation, dogs will twitch their legs and sometimes even bark during REM sleep. However, how they dream can actually depend on their breed. For example, pointers might search for game in their sleep, while Springer Spaniels might seek out birds. If you want to know whether your dog is dreaming, just watch them about 10 or 20 minutes after after they fall asleep. They've already started to dream if you can see their eyes flickering. Number 5. Aggression with Male Walkers 
Dog walking is essential for dogs to socialize in new environments and get much needed exercise. It's also an excellent excuse for us to get our step count up. But did you know that who in your household walks your dog might play a part in whether they are at an increased or decreased risk of being involved in an altercation with another dog? A study published in the Applied Animal Behavior Science Journal brought up some incredible points. According to the study, dogs being walked by males are up to four times times more likely to threaten and bite other dogs. They aren't entirely sure why that is, but they believe it might have something to do with the cultural phenomenon of how men train their dogs in the area the study was conducted, which was in Brno, Czech Republic. Researchers also wondered whether the increased bite risk had something to do with dogs reflecting their handlers' emotions. If their handlers are assertive or defensive when meeting other people, their dogs might act the same. The same study also found that dogs are more likely to act aggressively on the leash than off it, and that male and female dogs are more likely to play together than dogs of the same s Number 4. Dogs cock legs for dominance You probably don't spend much time thinking about how your dog pees, but here are some fun facts for you as icebreakers for your next social occasion. Okay, not really, but it's still some interesting information. Dogs have at least 12 different urination cycles, with the most common being the leg raise and squat. Many male dogs cock their legs, while many female dogs squat. But you don't necessarily need to be concerned if your dogs don't fit these molds, as every dog is different. Male dogs are much more likely to cock their leg and pee against things like trees and lamp posts because they want to mark their sense. If they lift their leg to pee, they can cover a larger area and send a stronger message to other dogs. Most dogs start with the leaning stance, which is when they stand on all four legs and slightly lean forward to pee. As they reach s maturity, many dogs start to cock their legs, although you can influence your dog to pee in a certain area where there might not be anything they can cock their leg on. Even some female dogs lift their leg to pee in a position known as squat raise. This is them trying to leave a message for the next dog to pass by. Number 3. Dogs mark territory with paws. Urine is not the only way for dogs to mark their territory. They also use their paws. You might have noticed that every time your dog urinates or defecates, they do that weird little movement with their feet, almost like they're trying to cover their business. But rather than trying to hide evidence of them being in that spot, they're actually trying to make sure other dogs know they were there. Dogs have scent glands on and between their paw pads. When they scratch up the grass, they're spreading the pheromones from these glands. If your dog is choosing to mark their territory in an inconvenient place, such as a public park where they're ripping up the lawn and dirtying the pathways, try to redirect their attention by calling their name or offering them a treat. It's also important to check their paws after every outing to make sure they haven't hurt their feet from kicking rocks or getting grass seeds stuck between their toes. Number 2. Dogs sweat through their paws. When we sweat, it can sometimes feel like we're sweating from absolutely everywhere. I mean, have you ever looked at your shirt after a workout at the gym? Well, dogs sweat a little differently. They have two sweat glands, merocrine and apocrine. Merocrine glands are located in the paw pads of dogs and help them cool down. In contrast, apocrine glands are all over your dog's body, but don't produce the type of sweat that makes them cool down. Instead, this type of sweat is more like a scent pheromone to help dogs identify each other. Some dogs also sweat a bit more than others. Some experts believe that dogs will sweat more through their paws in stressful situations because the moisture provides better traction if they need to escape their source of stress quickly. And while dogs have sweat glands to help cool them down, they are still prone to heat exhaustion. Seek help immediately if you notice that your dog lacks coordination, is panting and has excessive drooling, is warm to the touch, and has an irregular or rapid heart rate, these are all signs of heat exhaustion. Number 1. Dogs can love 
Well, duh. We know that dogs love us, but now science says they do, and somehow, that can mean more. Before a study was published in 2014, we knew dogs could form strong bonds with us, and even other dogs, but there was nothing to say that they could love other dogs and us. However, a 2014 study revealed that when dogs have a positive interaction with us and other dogs, the love hormone oxytocin is released in their brain. Dogs don't fall in romantic love as we do, but they can form lasting bonds and have best friends, like dogs they play well with at dog parks. Some dogs also love the cats in their homes. There are plenty of ways to know that your dog is in love. They might get excited when you come home, want to be around you all the time, yawn when you're around Around and make meaningful eye contact. As we end our list of surprising facts about dogs, it's hard not to feel grateful for these amazing creatures that bring us so much joy. Whether you're a seasoned dog owner or someone who loves spending time with furry friends, we hope these fun facts have given you a newfound appreciation for your canine companions. And if you're one of the many people still looking for that perfect four-legged companion, we encourage you to visit your local shelter and give a deserving pup a forever home. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. We'll see you next time then, folks, and have a good one.